today we're dealing with skill number eight, which is having difficult conversations with openness and respect. So it's important relationship skills. If you're tuning in, this is a series. You can get the others via um, the Facebook on Isaac 98. Point one FM, their Facebook page, but you can also get um, most of these videos on FBN TV. Yeah. So important relationship skills. And I'm looking at having difficult conversations with openness and respect. Now, relationship skills are a set of skills that help you form healthy, happy, and strong connections with others. In general, relationship skills are any abilities that help you to connect with others and form bonds, so healthy bonds. And these can be a broad range of abilities. So some of the important relationship skills that I am dealing with in this series are self-awareness, emotional regulation, empathy, being vulnerable, controlling anger or anger management, conflict resolution, active listening. Today I'm dealing with talking and listening to each other with openness and respect in difficult conversations. Long one, <laughs> long, <laughs> um, long title. Number nine, forgiving. 10, repenting and apologizing. And 11, setting boundaries. So I would have completed self-awareness, emotional regulation, controlling anger, anger management, empathy, being vulnerable and active listening. Now, this is a very important issue because there are difficult conversations in all our intimate relationships. And remember when I'm talking about intimate relationships, I'm talking about friendships, I'm talking about um, marriage relationships, I'm talking about even parent-child relationships, any relationships where this is a um, solid bond where we're sharing our lives with each other, right? And it's very important in these difficult conversations in all our intimate relationships that, you know, people, we want to feel heard, we want to feel understood. And actually not feeling heard and understood is a very, very painful experience um, in our intimate relationships. So in today's program, I really want to give you a method or somebody might call it a tool that I learned from Imago work that will help you, your spouse, your child, parent, to feel heard and understood. And as a result, you understanding things about yourself and loved ones that you never realize and even finding a way forward in the relationship. Now, when we, when we communicate in relationships, we're not just communicating for communicating sake, especially when we're having difficult conversations. We're communicating to find a way forward together. We're communicating to understand each other and know where we need to make changes and adjustments. So this is very important. So in any relationship, communication is essential, especially to get your needs met and to let your loved ones know how you feel. When communication is working well, persons in a relationship, they feel loved, they feel connected, you feel secure. But when there is defensiveness or misunderstanding or where one feels unheard, it is normal to feel unsupported or to worry about, you know, the health of that relationship. So in Imago work, they teach a way to talk that allows each spouse, each loved one to use active listening skills to deepen connection and to help each person feel understood. And remember the last, um, the last topic I would have covered, the last skill was actually active listening. And so now we're moving into this. Now, listening is key to being there for our loved ones. And listening can be more challenging when you feel a strong desire to react or to defend yourself. To keep the focus on your loved one, we have to think about these three skills, which I'm going to talk about, which is mirroring, validating and empathizes as some of my clients call it the MVE in right very very critical so if you're now tuning in I am speaking about a tool or method for having difficult conversations with loved ones now what I've also found is that this 
dialogue process can be used for difficult conversations with adolescents and adult children and any difficult conversation you want to have with an adult. And of course, the three main steps in the dialogue, as I said before, are mirroring, validating, and empathize. So just remember that, M-V-E, mirroring, validating, empathizing. Now, some other, some authors also call this method intentional dialogue. The idea is that you have true connection when you communicate intentionally rather than competitively. And competitively really is trying to prove your point. And this doesn't necessarily mean that the intention is bad. So like I was looking at that this morning, my husband was sharing something very painful with me this morning. And because I don't want him to be in that pain, I'm trying to show him how it's not exactly like that. And that was actually me trying to prove my point instead of truly hearing him and mirroring, validating and empathizing. And you know, of course, after that, I had to go by him and tell him, I realized because I read it over my notes for the program and I realized what I was doing. <laughs> So that even though it was coming from a good place, I didn't want him to feel pain, but that wasn't the point of it because people could deal with pain, right? I didn't want him to feel pain. So I was trying to show him, no, this is really what is happening, you know, really. And that is what wasn't, that is not what was needed at that point in time, right? What was needed at that point in time was me communicating, um, mirroring, validating and empathizing. And so that I'm saying that sometimes we do things. It's not, the intentions are not bad, you know. But just because the intentions are not bad, it doesn't mean you haven't done something wrong. So your intentions could be good and you could have still done something wrong. So of course, you know, I went by him and I hug him up and I tell him, you know, I'm sorry and uh, uh, approach was wrong. I just didn't want you to feel pain, but he's a big man. He can handle it, <laughs> Right. I think more than more of what he needed was the mirroring, validating, and empathizing. So know that we could all fall into that trap, even good intentions, but still having doing something wrong, even though our intentions are good. Now, intentional dialogue is a new way to talk and a new way to listen. More than a communication tool, it is a connection process allowing us to experience each other in a non-judgmental way. When we engage in dialogue, each is genuinely listening and hearing the other. Connection and safety prevails, right? So intentional dialogue, this is what it does. It prevents misunderstanding. So when we decide to dialogue like this, it prevents misunderstanding. It ensures that we hear what our loved one says in both words and meaning. It helps your loved one to feel truly listened to, understood, and heard. It conveys the attitude that your loved one's thoughts and feelings, just as they are, are worthy of your attention and focus. It creates clear and effective communication. It helps you to open up and become vulnerable with your loved ones. And we spoke about that skill of vulnerability, right? And it deepens your understanding of your loved one's point of view. So this is very important. Now, in the dialogue process, both parties have to agree to a basic ground rule. And what do you think that basic ground rule is? to talk one person at a time. You know, you have plenty of us interrupters, right? Talking one person at a time. So one person shares while the other person listens to mirror, validate, and empathize. And then they switch and the other person shares his or her side, not another topic, not another issue. Remember that in relationships, we have different perspectives. We see things differently, the same issue. We experience things differently because we are different. So what we're saying here is that while one person speaks and the other mirror, validates, empathizes, when the other person turn comes, we're talking about your side. 
the same issue, the same topic, but you are now sharing from your perspective. All right, so we're not bringing up some new topic when we our, our turn to share. So mirroring is the process, the first one, mirroring is the process of deeply listening to your loved one and accurately reflecting back the content of his or her message. It moves you into a state of being present because this is listening, remember, active listening is listening to truly hear the person. And when we choose to actively listen, one of the things it actually does, it prevents us from um, being defensive, which is very, very important, right? So when you actively listen, when you're listening to reflect back what you heard the person say, you're suspending judgments and opinions. So you truly listen. Let me hear what my loved one is saying. That's all I'm listening for right? It constrains your responses and your agenda. This is what I really want to get out of this. And then, as I said, it refrains you from defensiveness. So this is just so, so, so important, right? And it allows your loved one to be the center. How many of times you have shared something with someone and it, it became all about them? That is just so painful. And then you decide, that's not making any sense. And you try again and it became all about them. And then you start to say, mm -mm, no point sharing with this person. Because you know what? I'm sharing with them, but it becomes all about them. They become the center, right? You need to suspend your own perspective, judgment, and opinions, right, of your loved ones temporarily so even if you have some particular opinion about them something you don't like about them something you didn't like that they did yesterday put that down put it down put it down right be open to hearing his or her view of the world without giving your own opinion or view or evaluating positively or negatively what he or she is saying let it just be about your loved one the simple act of quieting your mind and not being reactive is a profound practice. And it begins to allow your loved ones to feel welcome and safe. Many times we are listening to our loved ones and we just want them to shut up so we could give them a piece of our mind or we could give our perspective or our view or we could tell them, that what they were saying is wrong or is foolishness. That does not help for intimate relationships and having conversations where people feel heard and understood, safe and secure, respected and loved. So mirroring actually strengthens your listening skills. So, so listeners, viewers, if you could just practice mirroring, and once we're in relationships, we get a lot of opportunities to do this. You will be surprised how overnight you can become a very good listener. So mirroring is reflecting what your partner is saying, sometimes just using their own words, right? And that could be tough because it could feel like I'm just parroting, but you can use their words and you can also paraphrase. It means that you're not um, interpreting, distorting, or emphasizing, you know, what, the, what they are saying. You are simply either repeating what you've heard or you are paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is you're giving like those general ideas of what you would have heard them say. And when your um, loved one pauses, or perhaps you have to ask them to pause, you will repeat repeat what you have heard them say, or you paraphrase what you have heard them say, right? But you are doing this without analyzing, critiquing, or modifying, right? When you repeat or you paraphrase what your loved one has said, so you give their words back to them, you know, you could start off your response. I mean, everybody's different, so we could say this differently, but this is just some suggestions that I have for you. So they've spoken and you're about to repeat, right? Or you're about to paraphrase and you can say, so I hear you saying, or it sounds like you're saying, 
Or you could say, let me see if I'm hearing you. Let me see if I got this right. So you're saying any of these things and you say what you have heard. Sometimes when you first try this, you might initially be having two conversations going on. You have the verbal one where you are practicing the mirroring, you know, paraphrasing or repeating what your loved one have said. And you know, you can have that internal one in your head where you are responding with an explanation, explanation or defense. And you have to be very careful because you can have in our head, which prevents us from really listening. No, but that's not exactly how it happened though. You know, in our head, you, you're thinking about defending or responding. So we have to be able to quiet ourselves because, and in the beginning, we could be having those two conversations going on. The internal one in our heads and the one that we're having with our loved ones, but it gets better as we practice, right? And when you practice mirroring long enough, the desire to debate or defense, it lessens over time especially as you start to notice your loved one feeling listened to and understood. And once you've heard, right, once um, you have said to them what you heard them say, you ask, did I get that? Did I get that? And of course, they could say, yes, you got it. Yes, that's what I said. Or they could say, well, yes, you got this part, but you didn't get this part and share whatever, you know, and, and you could just kind of reflect that again or paraphrase it. And then you can ask, is there more or is there more to that? You know, asking these questions can be profoundly healing to your loved one. These questions say something to them that they may have seldom heard. I have time for you. You know, you're asking, is there more to that? And then asking that, what you're actually saying, what they actually could be hearing, you have time for them, right? You want to listen to them. I want to know your thoughts, right? And of course, if you've asked, is there more to that? And they've shared more, you say, let me see if I got that. And you see what you've heard. Now, this is very important, very, very important. When you are sharing, you have to be careful of talking too much. Because remember, listening and remembering is hard work. So you can't just be going on and on and on and on for six, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes and think that the person can hear all of that or remember all of that. So sometimes in being conscious of that, you want to limit how much you're sharing at one point in time. You know, you want to kind of summarize things a little bit because it can be difficult if a person is going on and on for a person to truly hear everything and to remember. Also, both of you need to stay on topic. Do not allow other issues to come into discussion, right? Save those for another time. And us ladies, us women are very good on stringing four and five and six. So are telling the child about the pot that they didn't wash and in that, and yes, and remember, Yesterday, when I had to tell you about doing your homework, and the day before, when I had to tell you to call grandpa to remember to pick you up, and but we started with the pot, so let's just talk about the pot that they didn't wash. And you all understand what I'm saying, right? Now, when you first start using this method, it may feel mechanical, it may feel slow or awkward, but it is like learning to ride a bike, right? Eventually, it feels normal, it feels natural becomes like second nature so 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 like for 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 me doing this is easy now because it feels very normal natural and a normal way of of speaking right now the next step is validating so we mirror then we validating and validating really means that you're telling your loved one that what he or she is saying is understandable or make sense from their point of view. So, you know, you've listened well enough and also you know the person, you, you, know, you, you know how they think, you know what matters to them. So you can understand how this makes sense from their point of view. Now, it does not mean that you agree with them. 
It does not mean that you agree with their point of view. It means that you are genuinely listening and you can see their point. So it doesn't mean I agree with your point, right? You may have a completely different version of the situation, but that can wait. You may have a different viewpoint, but that can wait. Validation conveys that the information you are receiving and mirroring makes sense. It makes sense based on me knowing this person, right? It indicates that you can accept their point of view as valid, whether you agree with it or not. Validation is a temporary suspension of your own perspective that allows your loved one's ex experience to have, in a sense, its own reality. Validation conveys to your loved one that you know that their subjective experience is valid, just as your own experiences. Validation can be very tough. Validation, it can be very tough. So validation, what it sounds like, it sounds like that makes sense. And it makes sense because so, 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 so. Or you make sense to me. And what makes sense is, it doesn't mean you agree. You make sense to me because that is what validation can sound like. And you share the logic you see behind your loved one, right? What they have shared or their perspective. Um, so, so you 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 show that what they're saying so it's like I, I just because it just right now a young person coming to mind you know that for a young person everything is needed now and of course if they don't get to go to whatever function or whatever event it is like they miss out on life completely the whole world falling apart but of course as adults we know that's not so but if we understand their brain, if we understand, remember when we were young, we could we are able to see how that makes sense, how it makes sense to them that this is so important, even though we have a totally different perspective on the issue, right? If some of us are having trouble understanding our loved one's perspective, it is also, it is also helpful to ask for more information. You could say, can you tell me more about this, right? In that way, it is inviting instead of saying, I don't understand what you mean. I know sometimes we could say that I don't understand what you mean with a tone and a, and a facial expression that makes a person just want to hush. So, you know, like, look, I really don't understand what you mean, huh? And you know, the whole eyes. So the person like, oh God, all right. am I stupid? <laughs> Do I really want to continue this conversation? So we not, we don't, you know, tell me more. Tell me more. Help me to, you know, I want to understand you. Good. Validation recognizes that in any communication between two people, there are always two views. Of course, you can have another one, right? It enables you to allow two different worlds to coexist safely. The process of mirroring and validating affirms the other person and increases trust and closeness. Validation grows your capacity for empathy and connection. Validation increases trust, closeness, safety, and connection. When dealing with adolescents, it's important to know and understand some facts about their brains. An adolescent brain is not fully developed. The brain needs a lot of remodeling before it can function as an adult brain. Your adolescent loved ones are not working with the same brain that you are working with. And that's important to remember. The front part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, is normally remodeled last, meaning that that is the last part of the brain that becomes fully developed. The prefrontal cortex is the decision-making part of the brain responsible for your child's ability to plan and to think about consequences of actions. 
It is a part of the brain for solving problems and controlling impulses. Think about that. This part of the brain, this is the part of the brain that develops and last, but it's the part of the brain, decision making, right? Your ability to plan and think about consequences for actions, solving problems and, and controlling impulses, right? Changes in this part of the brain continue into early adulthood, right? So as late as for some people, 24 years, right? So, so most persons by 22, okay, it is adult, but it could go as late as even 24 years, right? Because the prefrontal cortex is still developing, adolescents, teenagers might rely on a part of the brain called the amygdala to make decisions and solve problems more than adults do. And the, 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 the amygdala is associated with emotions, impulsive, impulses, aggressions, and instinctive behavior. So kind of fight or flight behavior. You know, you get a... You, so you, you feel something, you just react. So teenagers are working with a brain that is still under construction. And it is important to remember this, right? Try to remember how you felt and thought as an adolescent. Try to remember what was important to you and how you felt about some, you know, the adult rules, times, chores, etc. Now, this, this doesn't mean, I am not saying here that we are compromising on obedience and respect and, them, and listening to us as adults. I'm not saying that. But the approach shouldn't be one of where you're beating them down or you're always quarreling and arguing with them, right? We're showing that we understand, but you still need to obey. You still need to be respectful. You still need to be manly, right? Um, but just think about how you felt if an adult really listened to you and understood you, which is what I'm talking about. Now, the third step is empathizing. And empathizing is um, you truly heard your loved one words and you showed, so sorry, so you've, you've truly heard their words, you showed that their perspective is, is valid. And now it's time, of course, to move into empathy. And we did empathy. Yes, we did. The skill, right? It is reflecting or imagining and on some level experiencing the emotions that your loved one is sending. Now, empathy opens your heart to your loved one. When validation where validation is truly here in the ideas, empathy is feeling the emotions. Now we have different types of empathy. This empathy is not cognitive empathy, which people use a lot of times to manipulate others. This is where I am um, truly could feel what my loved one is feeling. I know what this feels like, right? And you know when people are truly using uh, empathy that they know what this feels like because you see changes in their behavior. A person can be truly empathizing. This is not the cognitive where people use that to manipulate people, right? And in situations like that, people still feel unheard because we feel unheard when we don't see changes. And sometimes people refer to that kind of, like a dark empath has that cognitive empathy where it's just, I know what they're feeling and I use this now to control them. So we're talking about an empathy where you could truly identify, you know what these things feel like, right? It helps them to feel a deep level of connection. It creates kindness, compassion, safety, vulnerability, thus allowing you to experience a genuine connection. And we know when empathy is at work, we see changes in behaviors, right? Take a guess as to what you imagine your loved one might be feeling with regard to what they have been saying. So you say like, I imagine you might be feeling or I imagine that you might have felt, right? After, you know, you've said that, you, you, you check it out. So you use some feeling words. I imagine you might have been feeling alone and unsupported or disrespected and unheard. And you ask, because remember with empathy, we could get it wrong. Nothing is wrong with that. Just the very fact of you trying to empathize is such an awesome thing. 
right? So I imagine you might be feeling disrespected and unheard. So you want to make sure that that's what they're feeling. Is that what you're feeling? Is this how you're feeling, right? And if they say, well, yes, or not so much unheard, but yes, disrespected, you want to ask, is there anything else that you're feeling? So is there anything else that you're feeling, right? Very often, people describe thoughts and not feelings. So for example, a person could say, you feel like you don't want to tell me anything because I will share it with your aunts and uncles. No, that describes a thought, not a feeling, right? Many people confuse thoughts for feelings, especially those prone to analyzing or intellectualizing or educational system and culture values thinking over feelings. But the deepest level of intimacy in relationships is knowing how each other feels and being able to acknowledge it and being able to make changes based on that. Remember, you do not need to give up any of your own needs, power, or position to empathize. Empathize doesn't mean I agree. Empathize, empathizing means I understand. By empathizing and participating in the feelings that your loved one is experiencing about the event or the situation they are discussing, you are deepening the level of communication and it makes you feel connected. So the person who has listened, they've mirrored, they've validate, validated, empathized, now gets their turn to share their side of the story or the issue. And the, the, the other loved one now is now going to listen, to mirror, validate, and empathize. Again, remember that when you trade places, the new person doesn't start sharing a new topic or new issue, but rather they are sharing their side of the issue of the story and the person who just got, you know, just shared their side, they are now validating, empathizing, and, um, va sorry, mirroring, validating, and empathizing. But we're doing all this, why? Not just to feel connected, but to also find a way forward together on this issue. So what are we going to do going forward? How are we going to deal with this? How are we going, what changes does one of us or either of us need to make for us to continue to have a, a healthy relationship, right? Now, with your adolescent, after you have mirrored, validated, empathized, and you have them do the same, it is important to talk through decisions step by step with your child, with your loved one who is an adolescent. Ask about possible courses of action, your your child, your adolescent might choose and talk through potential consequences. Remember, they don't get all the consequences for things as you would as an adult. Encourage your child, your adolescent to weigh up positive consequences and rewards against negative ones. So giving you a tool for difficult conversations, right? You want to mirror, you want to validate, you want to empathize, both persons taking turns doing this. And yes, we feel heard. We understand things about ourselves. We understand things about our loved ones. But we also want to find a way forward that is healthy, that is loving, that is godly. And this can take some practice. It can take some time to feel like you're making these listening skills your own. So in the beginning, it can feel kind of weird. But practice is feel weird doing anything for the first time right? So during difficult conversations, you can use this. So once people know this is what we're doing, we know, okay, we can handle this, right? So your loved one shares a complaint. How do you hear it? How do you respond? And, and sometimes even if you alone using it, so you decide, I am going to listen like this. I am going to listen and, um, mirror, validate, and empathizing, it could make such a huge different difference in your relationship. All right, so very critical, mirroring, validating, 
empathizing to have difficult conversations. The closing word for me is to encourage, even if you alone, you're doing it, the mirroring, the validating, empathizing, it could make a really huge difference in your relationship. So even if you, you are hearing me today, your, your, your loved one is not here, they may, you may think they're not willing to do it, but just you doing it, they're speaking to you, and you just do the mirror, the validate, and the empathizing, you can see a, a positive difference there. Huh? God bless.